some Santa Barbarans might know me uh, because I was the first artist to start the Imadonari Festival. Mm -hmm. um, and um, part of that festival was introducing the art form, the three-dimensional pavement art, which was a, a new art form really that I invented. And so what I'd like to do is, is talk about uh, my experience with geometry and then how these uh, I came across these five creative principles, which I think might be very interesting for people. So let's do it. All right, let's do it. Okay. So as an artist, I've been fascinated by geometry for over 50 years, and it's a central part of my creative process. Uh, through my work, I discovered these five creative principles that can set us on a new path for understanding the relationships between art, nature, and science. So although the history of geometry is ancient, its history as a mathematical study began 2,300 years ago with Euclid's book, The Elements. Mm. Now, this is important. It's the world's oldest continuously used mathematical textbook. Mm. So in it, <clears throat> Euclid defined the point, the straight line, and the circle as abstract geometrical forms. He defined their primary relationships, uh, such as perpendicular intersections, and parallel lines in the same way. He did not, however, assign any broader meaning or significance to the elements or the relationships between them. So unfortunately, by not examining the significance of the elements and their relationships, Euclid missed five creative principles that are innate to geometry. Mm. This means that while the geometrical formulas created order and pattern, no one knew why. So we, here we can see diagram number one. So this diagram shows that all geometry is self-generating. It starts from nothing and unfolds into increasingly complex forms. On this diagram, we see 10 elements and the relationships between them that are the basis of all pattern and order. The question remains, why should interactions between straight lines and circles yield parallel intersections and parallel lines. That is why, why does order come forth? So we can look at diagram two. So now this second diagram <clears throat> shows how these five creative principles explain this. Each creative principle arises in a distinct order and mm -hmm. has a finite and infinite aspect. So each principle causes the next principle to appear. Now today, math and science are based on the original assumptions of Euclid, not on a foundation of meaning. But if we understand the underlying meaning of geometry and not frame it merely as abstract symbols, then we can begin to create an entirely new framework for understanding reality. So I use the creative principles in my work on color theory, perspective, and Renaissance drawing, but I believe the applications cross over many fields mm. because they are necessary in or they are necessary for order to exist. So we see them reflected all around us. They're in the faceted structure of crystals and snowflakes, uh, as well as logarithmic spirals of seashells and galaxies. So Einstein said, we can't, we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. And I think that the five creative principles enable us to connect our creative efforts in math, science, and art to the world around us. By seeing re reality in an entirely new way, we can change our thinking. Now, if you want to take a look at the short video at this point, the important thing in the video is it shows how these pri five principles arise immediately in the process of starting a geometrical drawing. The drawing surface represents unity in its infinite aspect. The single point represents unity in its finite aspect. The line segment represents duality in its finite aspect. The continuation of the line segment into an infinite line represents duality in its infinite aspect. The circle and the straight line are polar opposites. The circle is the finite aspect of polarity, whereas the straight line is the infinite aspect of polarity. The perpendicular intersection is the finite aspect of equilibrium. 
parallel lines are the infinite aspect of equilibrium. The relationships between the sides of a rectangle or right triangle are the finite aspect of proportion. The relationship between the acute angles of a right triangle or a rectangle it represents proportion in its infinite aspect. My first question for you is this feels like a philosophy lecture. Well, <clears throat> actually philosophy really can't exist without these five principles. Oh. So for instance, um, major concepts in philosophy are monism, which would be unity, or uh, uh, dualism, which would be duality. We are always dealing with polarity, which is just the, um, the relationship between opposites. And whenever right. you do op opposites, you're always gonna have a point of equilibrium. Yep. And then at the end, proportion is what allows us to, um, to judge magnitude or quantity. So between this, yes, the thing is that what this shows is that geometry has a, a conceptual basis that's identical to philosophy, but it's also, I think these are also, these five principles are, are fundamental concepts uh, that allow thought to occur. So when we, when we judge anything or when we make any kind of judgment, the, the, mo the primary judgment we can make is according to these five principles. I read in your bio at the, at the top of the show that you were, you're fascinated with the Renaissance and understanding Renaissance artists and and I get a sense in talking to you, we've talked a little bit and we've shared some of your work, that you're an old soul here in 2023. And um, that there was, I, I'm really curious about when you discovered in yourself, A, this, this love of art, because your, your art is spectacular. And at the same time, the other side of your brain, which was structure and form and math and geometry, which is is typically talk about polarity, is on the on the other side of creativity. Um, right. How how young were you when you started to notice your interest in both sides? Um, I think really by the time I was ten, because my father no. was a scientist, and uh, one of the books he gave me when I. I was uh, young was called the geometry of art and life because he understood that I, I was interested in art and yeah. he thought, well, maybe this book will kind of bring him over to the other side here. So it didn't work very well, but it did uh, give me an abiding um, respect for the idea that geometry is embedded in nature. And I think that's, that's something that science has been unable to uh, fully explain is why why these symmetries and these geometrical forms keep showing up. That even, mm. even when, when creatures become very, very complicated, we still hold to things like um, reflective symmetry in our bodies and so forth. Mm -hmm. So my feeling is that, um, <clears throat> that nature does embody these principles. Now, the thing was what people used to think was isn't it strange that we see all this geometry in nature? Well, nature for sure doesn't do geometry. Uh, but if geometry is a, a, a language of graphic symbols, right. right? And these symbols have these five, have for these five um, creative principles as their meaning, then nature could actually be using the five creative principles. And because they're both geometry and nature depend on these five creative principles. Therefore, we see these similarities. How, I wanna talk about E. Modinari and your, um, if we think of realism, if anyone has seen your work and seen the derivatives of your work, you were the first to do that. It is shocking how realistic you can make and and again i'm going to have people go to to look at your website and look at all the work you do e modinari you know a large square is 40 by 40 right. you you do hundreds of feet now yeah, by hundred yeah. i mean you, you very very large scale and i'm i'm curious 
how much time do you spend on the math of that art? How does, how do you, and I'm, as an artist myself, I'm just fascinated with that. Um, I think, I think geometry is at least for me, 50% of the design process in terms of time spent. And, and so I am even to initiate a project. The first thing I need to do is select a precise viewpoint oh. and it's precise in relationship to the, the surface, the painted surface yeah. and the environment. So the, um, idea about the idea of perspective is of course, that all information goes to one single point in space. Right. And of course, this goes back to unity and its finite, um, right. in its finite aspect, because unity in its infinite aspect is the, is the plane itself, is the totality of everything. But in its finite aspect, it is the focal point, which means it is, unity is really tells us about the observer, mm. the observer and the, the environment that's being observed. So that's what unity tells us. Now, my feeling is all five of the creative principles have, have correspondences in the physical world. So I feel that uni unity um, <clears throat> corresponds to the observer because nothing can happen without an observer. Right. Duality corresponds to time. Polarity corresponds to energy. Equilibrium corresponds to space and yes. proportion corresponds to the, our rational ability to, um, to figure out, the, the, to quantify the relationships between these other elements. So is it fair to say then as an artist, you're stimulating all five of those senses in the viewer, chances are they're not aware of that at all. They just, no, they're really having not. this experience, but you've very specifically touched each one of those five when you're constructing and you're, you're designing, what is this piece going to be? And how do I tap into all five? Did I get that right? Yeah. And uh, drawing specifically uh, Renaissance drawing, what it was, was a design system, which uh, starts with the idea that circles are, are the polar opposite of straight lines. Okay. And so geometry works because a circle is, is the infinite manifestation of the different distance between two points. Whereas a straight line, it, an infinite straight line is the infinite manifestation of the direction of the right. two point. Right. So distance and direction are actually polar opposites. And, and so Renaissance drawing says, what we need to do is take an observation and break it down into relationships between circle arcs and straight lines. And that relationship will be, uh, will be governed by proportion. Mm. So uh, you, you will never, I don't think it's possible in our time to master um, Renaissance drawing without really understanding that it is a completely abstract design process. So even though it might be so realistic, we think we can reach out and touch it, the, it, it, its structure is just as abstract as a Jackson Pollock painting. It's all based on ideas. It's interesting that you use that as the example, because that's the exact opposite of something that appears photoreal. Right, but the, the point is, but even, even then you would see, I'm sure as, he, as he's spreading this paint around, he is looking for the emergence of, of either unifying the different things, the different strokes he's making or combine or splitting them apart or unifying them or uh, using complementaries to make opposites or finding balances, you know, and, and also the proportion between everything. You can pretty much explain all visual art, whether it's um, abstract or modern art or classical art with these five principles. They're really fundamental. So on, on the surface, this might, this seems very logical and, and may seem, now that you've brought it to our attention, it seems obvious, but um, what about this as a discovery? Well, it took me about, it took me <laughs> full, the full 50 years to discover it because I really asked myself, I mean, I, I remember precisely asking myself as a teenager, you know, why does geometry appear in artwork? What does a straight line mean? What does a circle mean? Why, mm. why, 
Why do these interactions create all of this variety and order? So I, you know, I always felt that there needed to be a meaning because mm. if it didn't have a meaning, then how can something that has no meaning turn into the ultimate expression of order and pattern? So I think that I think in a very real way, science really struggles with this too. Mm -hmm. And I think science's struggle with um, understanding the 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 creative nature, the, the creativity is, is essential to nature. Science has this hard time understanding this. And part of it is because it never found the meaning behind the, the elements of geometry. So without that meaning, everything you do is, is based on something which seems completely arbitrary, you know, straight lines crossing circles, completely arbitrary thing. Well, it's not completely arbitrary. And um, by the, when you have two points in geometry, every form, no matter how complex, can be constructed from those two points without mm. adding any new points arbitrarily. Mm. All your new points are results of these interactions. Kurt, you clearly have given us, me particularly, a lot to think about. I sure appreciate you explaining this to us, and I want to encourage our listener to to dive in and, and learn more about this. Thank you so much. Thank you.